Joe Zekas from YoChicago.com. I'm at CA23 with the uh, great Buzz Ruttenberg, and we're going to talk about the state of the market today. Buzz, uh, well, today is February 7th, Joe, which is a very auspicious day for me because it's my daughter's 14th anniversary, and I'm glad to bring you some good news on the day of her happy anniversary. This is 2012, and in spite of the uh, persistent doom and gloom reports by some, uh, there are very special projects that are performing quite well today, and many of them are own. Uh, we're about sold out at 600 Lakeshore Drive. We're down to about 15 units left out of 400, and we continue to sell right through the bad market. But more exciting than what we have done in the past is what we're doing in the future, Joe. There's three new projects that Belgravia has. It's two are condominium, and one is a rental project. The two condominium projects uh, are one here at CA23 where we've started construction on phase two of a 48 unit total combined project. Phase one, the first 24 units are sold out. Phase two, the uh, second 24 units were almost half sold today. And as you can see by looking out the window, our construction is moving along quite well. And what we find is that there is demand today for value. And you asked me about the market in general, so this is a market with three bedroom, three bath homes, with a direct elevator access to the unit, parking on ground floor, and we're finding more and more young families with children would rather live in 2,000 feet on one floor than 2,500 feet on four floors. It's very convenient, and at a price point of around $300 a foot, we're seeing solid demand. We have another project in West Lincoln Park in the 1500 block of Montana. Montana is one block north of Fullerton, and we're just east of Ashland. We have 14 single family homes there that are likened to condominium, but they will be fee simple independent homes. Uh, and each one of those will be a little over 3,000 feet, four bedroom, four plus bathrooms uh, in a footprint, Joe, that's a 25 by 42 that will have also a backyard that's 25 by 40. So again, at a million dollar price point, we're creating value in markets that otherwise are having difficulty finding buyers. There is demand out here, but the buyers are very value driven. The size of the unit mattered to the developer where he could oversize the unit and expect to get paid for it. Today, the consumers drive it, and the consumers are much more concerned about a total chunk price and real value. And we're seeing that, I think, throughout Chicago, that there are more value-driven buyers. Now, one of the things that makes it difficult for the average consumer to understand is when they see the Case-Shiller Index reports, for example, which is certainly not very optimistic, and we understand it. But you have to appreciate that the Chicago land that they identify includes the Chicago MSA, Metropolitan Service Area, which will include a certain amount of difficult, struggling, working-class neighborhoods such as Gary, Indiana, certain parts of uh, West and South in Chicago suburbs that are certainly not reflective of what m most of us who live downtown Chicago will see in our primary neighborhoods of habitation where there's a shortage of supply, the foreclosure rate is fairly minuscule, though it hits all of us, and, and where the opportunity for new construction at value prices really isn't existing. So we're seeing a big tick up in demand. And our third project that we are involved in involves a rental project. And whereas most of the new rental projects are high rise, river north at approximately $3 a foot per month, which means on an 800 square foot one bedroom, you're paying roughly $2,400 a month. Uh, we're involved in a, essentially a three story project where we can deliver a $2 a foot project on about 700 feet. So we're at $1,400 for a one bedroom, right next to the brand new train stop for Metro, one stop downtown. We're right next to a brand new Mariano's. And you're in an established community where we will be the only new construction out of a community of uh, thousands of units, none of which are any essentially newer than 1960. So we're very optimistic about the market. We see it positive in many segments. And I think a healthy downtown Chicago speaks well for the future. And we see the commitment that the mayor has to improving the school systems, which is a fabulous commentary 
about where Chicago is going to be in the future. One of the huge uh, developments in Chicago right now is the sheer number of new high-rise projects that are coming out of the ground in the downtown market. Uh, more than 4,000 units. If you add up everything that's on the drawing boards, uh, there are more than 10,000 units. Is the market going to be able to uh, absorb that volume of units? Well, these are all rental units, Joe, and I think that the important thing to recognize is that there is a shift today, as we've all seen this nationally, from home buying statistics where we were running close to 70% ownership, uh, which was unsustainable, uh, down to the more normative ratio in the low 60s. And I do think that because the nature of our housing market in Chicago, as it is everywhere, is to overshoot. You overshoot on uh, the Greenspan irrational exuberance, and you undershoot by the same people who made too many loans making too few. So I do think that while there will be some sluggishness in the rent-up opportunity, that over time those units will fill a demand. We do have an increasing number of students who have graduated high school in the last year or two that are the uh, children of the baby boomers. And as the baby boomers are retiring and their children are finishing college, there will be a demand for rental housing because I do think that the lending standards, which we criticized as being too lax in the heyday of the boom, uh, have now tightened appropriately. And it is more difficult to get a home loan, as it should. And so the stability in the housing market, in spite of the press which we hear about, is really a good thing and that will promote rental and it will slow the growth of ownership housing that will be compatible with uh, the employment rates. You mentioned Kate Schiller a little while ago and I, I've always been, I've always wondered why anybody pays attention to an index of what happened four months ago in effect because that's reflecting at least four month old uh, contracts. I, I think that the, the, the reliance on indices is far more a national news statistic than something that you and I would rely on in making our own decisions. But there had never been a national statistic for measuring the volatility of home prices before, and it ultimately proved on a national basis to be fairly reliable. The other thing that's important to realize, of course, is that the ability to get a mortgage, the interest to buy a home, is also dependent on appraisers. And the same appraisers that brought you somewhat uh, optimistic values three, four years ago are now bringing you pessimistic values, but they support that by looking backwards as this case shoulder to say, well, the sales of yesterday don't support the price you're paying today. And that, of course, makes it difficult for homeowners to get loans and for buyers to sell and move up or relocate because they're having difficulty being able to guarantee financing to their buyers. So the index does have some value, even though it might not be meaningful to a particular property. That's certainly right. It, as a national yardstick relied on by the news, reporting media, and banks, and appraisers, the fact that they do a good job of trying to assess what happened three, four months ago has some relevance. What, uh, what kind of opportunities are you looking at these days? Um, well, a lot of what we're looking for are the smaller deals that tend to fall in the five to $25 million project range. Because as I'm sure many of you are aware, there's been a lot of uh, hedge fund money and institutional money looking for large broken deals today. And large would mean 50 to 100 million and up. And in Chicago, in spite of the press, you'll find that there is not a lot of that opportunity here. So the theory of Belgravia has always been to be big enough, bigger than the smaller people, but to fall under the radar screen of those larger, more successful developers and allow us to do projects for the most part that are in the uh, five to $25 million range today and yesterday used to run up to about 100 million. But we don't see that kind of demand being available today for us. So we're doing infill work in the communities where our typical size would be uh, 15 to 40 apartments, either rental uh, or condominium ownership. No, no more two-tower high-rises for a while? No more two-tower $400 million projects that I can see on our horizon, nor can I see it on anybody else's. But as you know, I'm still standing, Joe, and you could probably count on the fingers of one hand the number of uh, waterfront high-rises that were started around 2005 
that were successful both architecturally for the lenders who made the loan, for the homeowners who bought, and certainly in some part for the developers who sponsored it. We went, I attended a mortgage burning ceremony with you a while back, and I think uh, some developers would like to burn the guys who loaned them the money rather than the mortgage. I would think that's too, that the people being burned today are the banks and not their mortgages. Okay, Wes, thank you. Thank you, Joe.